Hello everyone. Okay, let me answer a, a question that's come at me a lot and I just haven't gotten around answering it till now. Okay, so when you see professional dancers demonstrating the tricks, right? Pirouette, foyte turns, what have you. The question I always get is this, well, how can they do this without placement? So if placement is so vital to the art and to your technique, how are these various whoever you want to point to artists doing this? How can they do foyte? Right? Because from, from the, the untrained eye, it looks brilliant, right? They're dancing around, they're spinning, they're not falling. So here's the part that you don't see. And I think the artists themselves are not aware of this, although it, it seems like it should be self-evident. Here's what I mean. If you learn placement and the fundamentals, which is the same thing, and you develop the strength and coordination to execute those tricks correctly, right? Then there are no negative consequences. You just do the trick, you're safe, you're healthy, and you do it very well. Without placement, take this piece away, you are trading the doing those tricks for the small at the small cost of your health and well-being. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. It's not a small cost. So every time you see one of our uh, great uh, dancers in New York execute foyte turns, let's say, and their body's twisted, as I've already explained, they are trading their health for those turns. You know, and the turns are, of course, not terribly stable and not safe, and they will be injured again and again. So this is a terrible price to pay to do some tricks. Okay, now how do they do it though? How do they do that? And I'll tell you how. We have an equilibrium system, right, in our mind, in our heads. So what happens is, <clears throat> when, let's say, dancers just imitate things, especially when they're children and they kind of grow up imitating, Without their knowledge, their mind creates that equilibrium. Because your mind is, is saying, so when you try to turn on one leg, right? Autom you know, your mind is tasked with keeping you from falling over and injuring yourself. It's just a, it's a safeguard, right? We all have it. So what happens is as they grow up doing ballet and they're imitating these tricks, their, their minds will shift their body in various ways and positions to, as well as it can, safeguard them from falling. Now, of course, they do fall anyway and they get hurt anyway, but your mind is going to do what it can to protect you. So that's how they're able to do it. And this is why I've, I've done some of these podcasts where you see a hip this way, and the shoulders this way, and the hips are back, and the chest is forward, and your body is, your mind is trying to protect itself and your body from injury by making those adjustments. The alternative is, of course, to learn placement correctly, and turnout, and technique, and train your mind to be comfortable with this very unnatural technique, which is ballet. It is very unnatural. It's totally unnatural. So the idea is that you, you train the dancer up in a very particular way so their mind, their sense of equilibrium gets used to correct positions. So they're, they're mechanically correct. They're technically correct. But when you're learning them, they don't feel that way. You feel unstable. But you are in fact stable if you're in the room with a teacher or coach who understands what's going on. Right? So that's the answer to that question.